2014 July webinar. So bear with us for a minute or two. So, Kieran often holds us today. So, anybody out there who wants to log any support calls, you've got about two hours, <laughs> two hours to log calls with Kieran before it. He, he, he promises to get them all fixed before he goes and leaves tonight. Okay, I think we're we're just about ready to get going. All right, so I'm going to end my webcam and hand over to my presentation. So today we have um, we we have. Yeah. We have we have um, Kieran Kinnan with me. It's an application engineer with IMGS, and I have myself, Kieran Carr, general manager with IMGS. And moderating is Amanda Donegan, who is a marketing executive with our Western IMGS. So we're just about at three o'clock. So I'm going to just wait for just going to kick off now. So. Yeah. So IMGS, we deliver innovative spatial solutions, uh, innovative spatial solutions for the desktop, web, and mobile, built on our partners' technology. Our partners are inter our Intercraft, and now there's a new division with the Hexagon Group called Hexagon Geospatial to actually now look after the G Media and AirDAS range, and we'll be talking about the G Media products today. We're also partners with Leica and Safe Software, and our solutions are designed to meet the challenges of government mapping agencies and utility and communication customers. Our customers include the OSI, OSNI, or otherwise known as Land and Property Services, ESB, Aircom, NAE, BT, Irish Naval Service, and every local authority in the Republic of Ireland. So today we're going to talk about G Media Desktop and give an overview of G Media Desktop. So G Media <laughs> Hello? So I was having a slight problem with the web webinar. Um, Hello. 
sorry, everybody. We just had a, um, a problem there with uh, our telecommunications. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're back in. So thanks to everybody who's joined us. Uh, a few more people have come online. So just to go back, we're talking today about G Media Desktop, and we're going to give an overview of the 2014 product. So the G Media Desktop is a powerful GIS management tool for maximizing your geospatial resources. It provides simultaneous uh, geospatial data access in a united and a single map view. And it provides efficient geospatial processing, analysis, presentation, and sharing. So it has intuitive and dynamic tools that automatically update the results in response to changes. So the big thing with the 2014 release is actually, and it just came in in 2013, but it's kind of the functionality now has been enhanced at each of the levels, is that GE Media now provides uh, three desktop tiers. So you now have the Essentials tier, which provides data access, querying, and image preparation. You also have the Advantage tier, which provides vector data capture, GIS database creation, and raster analysis and elevation architecture. And this is something that's new in the 2014 release. Before this, we didn't have such advanced edit tools and the ability to do raster analysis and elevation artifacts at the Advantage layer. So with this release, Hexagon Geospatial have added in some new tools and the Advantage that were previously in other products. And again, at the G Media Professional level, which is always the high-end product for doing data management and quality control, there now has been added tools on the quality control side as well as advanced feature modeling capabilities, which were previously add-on products. So whenever you log in to G-Media, depending on the license you choose, and you can actually dynamically change licensing. So you can actually go on the fly from essentials to advantage to professional if you're actually working in an enterprise environment. And your, me your menu will then change from, uh, e from either one, and it'll show essentials and advantage. And it will hide the functionality that you don't actually need. And also the ribbon interface, which came out in G-Media 2013. With the 2014 release, this is now context sensitive. So as you are doing work, the menus will update reflectively. And things like the advanced feature model and the cadastral tools will only show in the menu if you have data set up that actually uses those that functionality. If you don't, and if that workspace isn't set up for that, it won't show those tools. So it doesn't clutter your menu. With the 2014 release, we've also had some, some nice GUI enhancements. So with the advanced feature model, you can now have a GUI for defining and assigning pick lists. And also a little handy thing if you're selecting features on the map, you can actually do a select by polygon fence and just draw a polygon on the map and get a list of all the features back in that area. We also have the um, we also have some nice fast lookup tools, and I'll be showing these today. So you've got a locate features by attribute search where you can actually type in any attribute and select any of the features that's in the legend, and then it'll go off and query for any returns of that attribute across those multiple features. And again, with the locate by query, you can actually do the same thing, but by building a query and again go across your tables. Again, very nice, uh, useful new productivity tools there. Also, with the 2014 release, uh, inter Hexagon have continued to keep up with the latest uh, platforms. So you can see we support Windows 8, Citrix Zen App, uh, Windows, and of course Windows 7 as well, and all the enterprise databases. We also, with the big thing with 2014, again, is we keep up to date with our databases. But for anybody who uses Esri File Geo database, we now have in G Media the ability to read and write to the File Geo database. And this is a great tool now, a great functionality that was never there before. So you can actually read and write your data to the Esri Geo database. And with the ribbon, some people find the ribbon, you know, a little bit um, hard to find some of the menu buttons are where they are, but you can actually fully now with 2014 customize the ribbon and customize where it is and say and move the bars around to, to suit yourself. I think it's even a German version there. And also with G Media, with the 2013 and again improved in 2014, um, there has been client side caching added to the TITS product now to improve queries and background path mapping performance. So again, that's what happens when it used to be. Some people would remember with the older versions of G Media, um, sometimes starting up the workspace could be slow. Uh, with this here now, it'll cache data locally and, and improve the, 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 the startup times. One big thing anybody who has tried to, to build maps over the years is the ability now in G Media to create dynamic labels. So they have the rule-based functionality to actually auto-generate labeling for you and to ensure little things like that. 
the label stays inside a polygon, that, that the street name goes along the, the, the route of the road. And that you can change this kind of labeling, add rules, and then if you're happy with them, even export the, the labels out to a permanent layer. So again, the labels will dynamically adjust as you pan or zoom. This is very useful tool. There's OEM and the G Media Fox, and I'll be showing you that now in a few minutes. So, just to show you some of the bit, some of the nice new tools within the G Media Essentials, I'm going to skip out of my PowerPoint here, and. I'm going to close my Outlook as well. So we go into G Media, and we have. So the first thing you can see, I have a map here of Dublin, some sample data I've got from Dublin City Council. Um, we can we can see the first thing for anybody who's used to G Media Six, you'll notice a big difference in the ribbon bar here at the top. So now instead of having the use the old file menu type structure, we now have these nice big buttons and icons that are very similar to the office. Uh, interface that we will be used to. We also have, what I think is very useful, is the quick access toolbar, so that you can actually put any buttons that you're using onto that toolbar yourself, and they will actually um, leave them there for handy access. No matter what ribbon you're on, the quick interface, quick uh, quick access toolbar will always stay permanent. So you can see I have my save buttons, undo, zooms, pan. And uh, all there because I'd always use them, and it's good to have them in the in in a, in a e e easy location. And you can see as well, at whatever level of products you have, you have different menus now. Today I'm just running professional, just because it's, I haven't time to be switching from version to version. But with the professional version, I then have extra menu buttons like the cadastral and the advanced. But on all levels, and including the essentials, we also have this tab, which is called the My Workflow tab which again is where you can actually take buttons that you're using or functionality you're using and have them lined up in the order you need to use them. So again, instead of having to go through each of the menus, if you're just working on a day-to-day -day routine, you can bring functionality to the My Workflow tab and it'll remember that every time you log in. So for example, I like to use the Library Organizer, so I can either add it to the Quick Access Toolbar, and then it shows here, or I can say Add to My Workflow. And it's in my workflow. You can then see the library organizers here. And I just need to put in my libraries. So you can then see all your library and your organizer there. So it's very useful to have whatever menus or buttons you need to have. OK, so one thing that was actually came out in a service pack with version 6 of G Media, of the late versions of G Media, but not many of our customers would have seen them, is the ability to set up quick searches. So in G Media, you can actually go in and define a new search, and I can actually say, okay, I'm going to set up a street search on my geodirectory data. So I've got an address view. I can go in and say filter, take street name, uh, and I'm going to use a like because I can never spell properly, and show values, and I'll just pick a value here, say one branch road. So now I have a, a, a filter. But actually, what I what you used to have to do in G Media before was you had to go in, and every time you wanted to search for a different road, you would have to go in and actually change this text and open the query, and change the text. But now, what we can actually do is we can take out that, type into square brackets, enter a prompt, so enter street name, and I've now got my street search. So I'll just type it as a street search. Hit OK. And we've now got a street search. So then if I hit the searches menu, sorry, wrong button, I hit the searches menu. So down here now, I can have a list of all my searches. So I've only got one configured here, and it's street search. And you can see here it says enter street name. And if I type in star Abbey, oh, sorry, the other way around, Abbey. There. I had a search. I get 625 hits of houses in our buildings in the city that have Abbey in them. And I can pan around the city and move from one to the other. And again, so I don't have to actually go in and change the query or run it again. If I want to change that to be if I want to change that to be another search, I can go in and type in church run the search, and it'll then return. 
So you can do the same again. Sorry, that's the way to that. And it'll return the search. So you don't actually have to recreate these searches, open up the properties, and do things. The other thing with another nice tool that was put in with the later releases of the patches of Gmedia and is now patched up is I can actually zoom out, go to a location, and I can use location to remember where I want to work. So if I want to work in this area here, I'm doing some job in here, I can go to my home menu and I can name that location. So I can call it my Dublin or something and then it's there. So if I then go back out to another location, so I've gone back out, I can just go into my locations bar and I can pick any location that I have. So I can say my location Dublin and it'll remember or I can pick another location or I can pick my autos or wherever I want to go. So that's again a very useful tool, that a very productive tool if you to remember any areas you're working on so that when you come back or if you're working in large data sets, and again instead of having to do searches and queries, you can actually just write in a, a location stored in your workspace and then you can have them for again. So I'm going to sit now by my planning applications. Another tool that was <coughs> excuse me, put in with the um, <coughs> the later releases is the ability to do categories. So most people now will have big databases. So if I look at our if I look at our data data connection here, and you'll see under my webinar demo, I've got about six or seven tables here. But I may only want to work on two or three of them, and I may only want people to use meaningful names, not things like RD, buff, 10, 11, 12, 20. Well, what you can actually do at an enterprise level is you can go into your category. I can create my own demo category. And in there, I can add features. So I'm going to look at my webinar, and I'm going to take the, these three features here, RD, buff, 1, RD, 2. I'm going to rename these. So properties, I'm going to call that local road. So it's a nice name that people understand. I'm going to call this one here regional. And the last one national. Okay. So we have our roads here. So I now have a category. So when I go to my legend or query, the category is now shown at the top. And I see these three knit layers named in the names that make sense to me. And I don't have to scroll down through a big database. Now in that little database I have there with 10 layers, you might say it's not worth it. If you have a, an enterprise database with 50 layers and it's all named with you know DBA friendly names that don't really make sense, that's not great for a GIS person. So they can have their category set up and have simple little names renamed and hide the complexity of the data model. You can also, in the categories, you can also um, configure the attributes. So again, if there's a table with a lot of attributes, you can select which attributes are uh, shown and which attributes aren't shown. And you can rename the attributes. So if I want, you can rename any attribute and give it a, a more meaningful name and use it as well. So again, very useful. And again, if you go to the queries then in Gmedia, Again, your category is then shown, and it shortens down the list, and you can actually access that very quickly, as opposed to having to trawl through the full database. Again, some nice productive tools are available at all levels of the product. And then the final one, which I think is really nice, is the labeling tools. So if we go into our labeling menu, we've now got a label manager. So I go into the label manager, and you see I've been here before, and I'm setting up a label for our planning application. So first off, in the properties, you can define the, the label. So you can say what fields you want to use from the database, what fonts. And you can also go in and select more advanced styling if you want on the fonting and use all the style libraries that Gmedia has. Once you have the basic property set up, then you can define the rule. And in here, you can do your things like, well, I'm going to place it horizontal, or I'm going to place it at dominant angle, or I'm going to use leader lines if the text won't fit within the partial. And you can have other rules. And the other one that, that's very useful is allowing font reduction. So you can tell it how many times the system will automatically reduce the font to ensure the text fits within the rule. So again, it's by 0.5 point every time. So if I put up the 6 or 9, it'll, it'll do it. So now I'm going to run 
the labels. I'm going to toggle dynamic labeling on the workspace. And you're going to see for the planning applications there we have in the center, we're going to auto-generate the labels. So without having to try and figure out font sizes and how to place them and actually maybe going in manually and editing the labels and placing them, we can actually just generate them on the fly and then these can be saved. So let's give this a second. Change a little bit slow at the minute. I'll just give it a oh, two seconds. My machine's overheating. Okay, um, so this again, like we, it, it, I'm showing it here for um, polygons. This will work with lines, uh, even with uh, with lines. You and there's different rules, of course, for lines. So you can tell it to follow the track, follow the road, follow the pipe, then you know, the curve around. But it all things you can see like in Google Maps and that. And with point data, you can also tell it you know, um, to place the point at, you know, 2 o'clock against the, the center point or, or 4 o'clock, but also you can actually tell it where there's clashes, the, the priority of positioning where you want the, lay, the points to go. So you can actually place that as well. So this is taking a little bit longer than it usually is. It's probably because I'm zoomed out so far. Um, we'll give it a second. And it should come back. A little bit slow. That's okay. Um, okay. Well, as we are tied for time, I let that run, and then I'll just talk about the uh, advantage, and then we can see the output when I come back. Okay. So, G Media Advantage. For anybody who's used to the G Media product, um, this is a new product here uh, that wasn't available before 2013, and with the 2014 release, this tier has actually also been enhanced to provide some advanced feature capture and editing tools. Um, also as well, validation tools that weren't actually in the GMedia product, they used to be in the GMedia Fusion product. And also now uh, the ability to do vector and raster analysis and also handle LiDAR data. This is anybody who is aware of it, this is the old GMedia Grid product that is now freely available with GMedia Advantage. So in essence, with GMedia Advantage, it, it, it's a high end, it provides a lot of high end functionality at a very reasonable price. So, with 2014 release, the G Media Advantage has provides more pro productivity feature tools. So now we have merge, split, re-digitize, and copy, which were previously only available in G Media Professional. And we also now have the smart snapping tools. So you got tangent snap, intersection, midpoint are all available, and all, as well as the smart snap tolerances. So all the snapping that was in G Media Professional is now in G Media Advantage really making GMedia Advantage a very uh, useful data capture tool, again, without having the full cost of GMedia Professional. We also now have with GMedia Advantage val the validation and cleanup feature geometry. So we're now able to validate geometry and, and tidy it up. And with the validate geometry, these are the checks that you can now do. So you can check for empty geometries, unknown geometry, kinks, duplicate features, out of range, slices, all sorts of things like that. And with the that as well, we also have the ability to validate connectivity. So connectivity anomalies are anomalies that exist in the spatial relationship. And again, these can be done. But it is recommended that you do your validate geometry first and then run your validate connectivity. And now there's a new queued edit map window that allows you to show, it allows you to trawl through all these connectivity issues and see each one individually and step through them. Another big area that with GMedia Advantage is the with the new release we have great analysis tools. So we can do things like watersheds, runoff bases, calculate volumes, create contours, and perform perform complex spatial analysis such as site location and car planning. So because now we can handle digital models and digital terrain models, you can even do things like watershed delineation, where you can see where the water is flowing, you know, downhill paths, drainage networks, uh, and watersheds. Another big area is be able to do hotspot detection, so to look at point maps and actually then figure out the hot areas, you know, for crime or responses or um, uh, outage management to see where your damage on your network is or traffic flow or signal intelligence. Again, this is all now available, so if you have a digital model, you can build these kind of nice maps, and I'll be showing you an example of that in a second. And we can also do predictive analysis, so you can actually figure out the best path to be taken. So to calculate which way to go or which how to how to resolve the solution uh, going from one area to another. So again, just to show you now the GMedia advantage. Hopefully now when I go back, my labeling is back. 
And it is, yeah. So I can now zoom in here, and the labels will be coming on. And you can see, yeah, it's because I'm so far out. So we can see the labels, and you can see they've been all being placed. So just to finish off that part, you can see, because I told it to put on leader lines, it is showing the grant permission here outside the leader, outside the polygon with the leader lines. If I go into my label manager and actually change the rule on that and turn off leader lines, and OK, and give it a second, you can now see that the, the, the app they, is now putting the decision codes inside the polygons. Um, and the ones, the smaller applications that don't have a code, don't now have uh, data. Again, if you want to make sure every one of them has it, well, you can actually go in and change the rule again and add in, you know, 100 point reductions if you really want to force it in, and hit OK, and the rule will come back, and every, every label then should have, will will try and fit in the text. So you can see smaller polygons here are now getting the the labels in. So again, this is very useful. Uh, Anybody who was using Gmedia before will, will have found that that was um, uh, would have been a pain in configuring data to actually build that kind of functionality, but now that's, that's available. So, which first thing we want to show with the Gmedia Advantage tools is the validation. So if I go to my toolbox, you'll now see we've got this new menu that wasn't there before or only had a few buttons in, the, in 2013. I can now do a validate geometry. So I can click Validate Geometry. I can take my planning applications. And then in here, you can actually say what geometry tests you want to run. So kickbacks, duplicates, and even if you want to do some kind of specialized ones, like loop in line or short vectors, or even Z value uh, tests. So if there's areas without Zs or Z breaks or whatever. And then the output is outputted to a queue and to a query. And you can turn it on or off. So I'm going to run a validation on my planning applications. And you see in that data, we have a number of kickbacks. And then we have our queued map edit. Now, my window is a little bit tight here because I'm running on the webinar. But i got my queued edit here. And I've got my map. So if I just bring that across and bring this across, you can see the queued edit window shows the record, and I can jump through each of the, the anomalies, step through the queue, see the issue, and then I can either edit it with my edit tools, or I can use the auto, gener auto tools to actually correct the geometries when I can. As well as being able to run the validate geometry, I can also run validate connectivity. So I can do the same query now on my planning applications. Yeah, in here we now have on connectivity we have some different queries. So we've overshoot, undershoot, and mismatches and things as well. And we've also got some specialized ones as well. But I just run the, the standard and again it's gonna run out. And in this case, because this connectivity issue is gonna run out of my queue and I got my anomalies, so I hit OK. And it runs off does the same connectivity queries on the workspace. I'll give that a second. Yeah, and now we have the connectivity issue. So you can see some of our connectivity issues. And you can see on that data that there are a lot of data that wasn't captured, uh, that hasn't been joined up properly. So it's probably just uh, wasn't captured at a high enough scale. So you can see the non-coincident planning applications. You can see we have a whole rake of applications here. And you can see how data here has been has not, not been captured properly. It's not lining up. There's a, there's a line coming off here. That should emerge in a method so you can edit that or fix it. So we can step through these records and you can see all the different types of splices and overshoots and issues. And again, these were tools that were available only at the professional level or in Gmedia Fusion, which was an add-in product, but now they are available at the um, at the Gmedia at Gmedia Advantage level. So really useful and you can you can very cost effective as well. Okay. So I'm gonna close my queue that window and close my legend and get rid of the queue and bring back my map. Okay. Um, so that shows that shows my uh, validate geometry and validate connectivity. And then the next thing is just to give you a quick look at the G Media grid. So if I actually go back into there's another workspace I have with some sampled American data, you can see the grid menu here. So 
end bridge, you can import in digital elevation models, you can define areas of study. If you want, you can masterize features, you can build mosaics, do visualizations, uh, statistic analysis, path analysis, we talked about doing paths and surface analysis. So a lot of tools for that kind of point analysis, bringing in point cloud data, bringing in incident data, and doing heat mapping. So I'm going to do a, um, a simple example here with some point data I have, which are, are the incidents in the Nashville area, and I'm going to do a density map. So I'm going to click density, I'm going to select my incident map, and I'm going to use occurrences as my attribute, and that's okay, I'll take that, and I'm going to very quickly run my density analysis, and we now see a nice rasterized density map raster product, and again, if I want to be able even to change that coloring, I can go into my layer, I can go view legend, and I can go occurrences per kilometer, select all the features, and I can even change the color scheme, change color, sorry, wrong one, change color sequence, and I'm going to go from a nice red, down to a yellow, hit OK, play that, close, and you can see these raster maps, and then you can produce these heat maps with shot showing you where the incidents are, you can spit them out, you can use them as an overlay, it gives a very clear imagery of what you're actually doing. So now, with this, with this kind of tools now in G-Media, you actually, again, with it, having to buy extra tools, you can actually do this heat incident analysis, heat spot analysis, grid type analysis, all through the same project, all at the G-Media advantage level, again, which, again, which is great to see. Um, I could spend two or three hours going through the tools in Grid, so we won't do it today, but we will have a, a webinar on the um, Grid tool set at a later date, because it actually is a, it's a session in itself. But that's just to give you an, an, a, a, an example of some of the things you can do, and even now with the product, you can actually, it comes with a number of um, tutorials and uh, and how to actually do things like contours to them, elevation workbenches, what points of risk, lots of examples, and how also how to use those integration tools as well. And we've also got some how-to examples, how do you convert your them, change contacts and prices. So again, very useful, a lot of functionality in it. Uh, it'll be a great, uh, great data at, that, at the product at this level. Okay. And I'll just jump back to my PowerPoint. So, um, and then with G Media Professional, actually again, there have been a number of tools that have been added into the product. So again, so namely the ability to do transaction management, uh, also the ability to support advanced feature models and build tracing models through G Media, also partial and cadastral management, dimensioning, and also again some more advanced geometry management tools being able to do conflation. So First off, with the 2014 release, so you can now do tracing because you can set up geometry connectivity, and we can actually do forward and reverse of feature digitizing, and define stop features as well, and provide and do things like dynamic analysis against trace results. So, for example, you can do toxic spill occurs or trace downstream in the water network, and then be able to identify fields that are, or areas that are affected by the spill. Also, with the um, 2014 release, we also with professional now have the ability to do dimensioning. So you can place these kind of advanced construction dimensions on, on your on your maps. Thing of things are usually available only in in CAD tools. You can now do that on in your GIS as well. And for those who are using Oracle, you have the ability to do transaction management. So with G Media, that a professional now, the, what used to be called G Media Transaction Manager is part of the product set. And in there, you can do things like long-term transaction management. You can check in, check out changes. You can do conflict resolution, and that now is all available in the in the product. And also, with again with the 2014 release, they've enhanced some of the the, the geometry tools at the professional level. So we now have edge matching to assist in the integration of feature sets that share a common boundary, and conflation, which are tools to merge two data sets, retaining the best characteristics of each. So, for example, you could have a um, uh, you know, if one data set has good geometry, the other data set has good attribution, and you want to merge them together, well, the conflation tools will do that for you and bring them in. 
and again, uh, all available at the professional level. So just jump out to um, sorry to G Media back at my G Media. So I can first off by going back to my toolbox, you can see with these new tools that weren't available previously in G Media Professional. So we have our edge matching, we have our conflation tools, and we we can we can run them as well. Uh, so the uh, so I can run the edge match. So I can select a feature, so my webinar demo feature. I can select another connection. So you can even do the edge matching across databases. Well, I'm going to do it in the same one, and I'm going to uh, create an edge match. So I'm going to add an edge match, and I'm going to do an edge match between my partial feature and my road feature. Sorry, before I do that, I should show you the data. So if I fit to Oh, if I add the feature, so in my webinar I have road and I partial, and if I fit to the partial, oh, uh, let's give it a color so you can see it. So you can see it's useful. So that's the partial colors and the road. Uh, give it a color. I have some colors here already, so I've used before. So local road will do. So you can see we have here two partials, which are land partials, and we have a road. But I, when I was capturing this data, I wasn't using the the snapping and coincidence tools that GMedia provides. Because remember, when you're doing GMedia, you can use the maintain coincidence and copy existing use existing geometry when digitizing to ensure when you're drawing a line that it snaps off the other line and then shares that boundary. And we've also got our snapping tools here, which again, as I said, these are now available at the advantage level to ensure one line capture snaps off the other. So but what I can do here is you can see there's a gap between the road and the partial. So they're not actually matching up on the edge. So I can then use the edge match tool. So if I go into a toolbox, edge match. I can now say I'm going to do a, uh, an edge match on the parcel on the road. I can modify that. So in that there, you can actually say, what's the rule? You can modify your rule. So you can actually say on detection rules, you know, what's the separation? Degrees, I've got some simple ones here. And the same on the resolution rules. You know, how much weight, which is the correct line? Is it the road or the parcel is the right one? Which one do you give most to correct? And you can run the c correction on the parcel. But now I'm just going to run the um, the edge match to show you how it can detect the, uh, the 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 issues, and I can go report, and then it tells me this is my report. This is what I've set up. So once I've that done, I can go close and save it, and then I can go into my automated tool, and you can see in here now I have my automated rule. And in here, you can see the auto fix. I can change that to auto fix. Yes. Uh, separation, degrees, whatever. And you can now run that on the data. And it says close. And yes. And then it shows me the issues I have. So there are two records that are able to be resolved. Again, I'm running at a real estate here with my data, with my maps. But you can see. Put my edge match query here and my data there. I can step through the boat records to show the issues with the boundary and it highlights it and we can turn on and off each of the features and see them. So that way we can then fix our data. The auto, um, I think my changes were way too far that it wouldn't do the auto fix. But if you set up the tolerances properly, it can auto fix that records and show it. So again, that edge matching technology that wasn't, would have been a, an add-on before, is now available in G Media Professional. And again, uh, very useful, e easy to use and actually very powerful to ensure high quality data and stop having mismatches and bad geometry like what I had shown in the in my example there. Okay. And again again this, this as I said this used to be this whole area around the um, toolbox, the the which used to be G Media Fusion. That is again another um, uh, webinar in itself and the functionality, so we will be showing uh, some detailed workflows in that, particularly around the whole geometry management later in the year and how you can do it. And some of the other tools we will be showing at, at the next 
webinars will be the cadastro tools. So again, if your if your database is set up for cadastro, you can do the things like COGO operations for managing your partials and all the partial type queries and validation to make sure there's no overlaps and making sure your geometry is working correctly. And we also have the ability then to set up advanced feature models. So I have a simple feature model set up here. So we can see I have pipes and valves. And in there, you can actually define your feature attribute classes, define any operations that happen on them features or rules, and event handlers. You know, So if you create a new pipe, check that it's connected to a valve, all this kind of advanced functionality that was separate to the media professional, but now is part of the product. And again, I think we'll be having a, a, an in-depth webinar on that functionality at a later stage. OK, so that's, that's a, a whirlwind tour of, of G-Media Professional. Um, so what you can see with the, uh, the three tier levels of the product is that we now have a lot more functionality in the G-Media 2014 range. If you are interested, a lot of our customers are on G-Media 6, 6.1. If you are interested in upgrading and getting on this nice new modern platform, please let us know. We'll be happy to come down and uh, uh, show it to you. Um, we also have just some, uh, some up and coming dates to have bear in mind. Um, we have the Save the Date, which is, sorry, we have the IMGS Geospatial User Conference, which will be showing off a lot of the Hexagon Geospatial um, data that we're seeing here, showing here today. So we have an event in Dublin on the 25th of September an event in Belfast on the 30th of September. We're also uh, running uh, GIS Ireland. We'll be, sorry, we'll be attending and sponsoring GIS Ireland in Eologia on October on the 16th, and we'll be sponsoring and speaking at the Geodata Conference in Belfast on the 20th of November. You saw today uh, G Media 2014. We'll be having a webinar on G Media Webmaster 2014 next month, on the 12th of August at 3 p.m. as well. So hopefully you can join us there. So I'm just going to put you. I'm going to ask Amanda if we have any questions and put this on speakerphone. Yeah, we have questions in, in the right-hand panel, if anyone else has any questions. The first question that came in was, what sort of formats can GeoMedia read from and write to? Um, uh, GeoMedia can, uh, can read and write now, again, we, as I mentioned in the, um, in the webinar, it can read and write to SQL Server, Microsoft Access, and Oracle, which are, it's always its format. But since 2013, it can read and write to PostgreSQL or PostGIS SQL. And also, as I said, this year, we also have read writes for um, Esri File Geo Database. And that actually is at all levels of the product. Before, read write access was only provided in the access level. And for Microsoft Access and the, and the Essentials level, you can now read and write at, for SQL Server, Esri, Oracle, at all three levels of the product, Essentials, Advantage, and Professional. Next one is, what are the benefits of Geomedia over other GIS applications? Oh, okay. Um, well, I suppose it, it, the, it probably is a very open application. The fact now that it, it can support um, the Esri uh, formats as well, read and write to that. And we can actually export to Shape and import from Shape. We can also export to CAD and MapInfo. And we can read all this data on the fly dynamically and, and support it. So I think it, it is as openness. I also think now with the 2014 release, there's an awful lot of functionality in the product that wasn't there before, so it, it is very cost effective um, and provides a lot of tools. So I think it's a great move by Hexagon to merge these tools in together and make it more simple. So um, I think, yeah, openness and a very modern interface. I, I like the ribbon interface. Um, it takes a wee bit to get used to, but once you do, it, it becomes second nature. Uh, the next one is, do IMGS provide training courses for Geomedia? Yeah, um, we, we, we do provide Geomedia training on demand. Um, so if you want any training, we have a team, team of training trainers, including myself. Um, so if you need training, just let me or Amanda know, and we'd be happy to arrange it. Yeah. Where can you download an evaluation of Geomedia? Yeah, we, we, you can download it from the Hexagon Geospatial website. So you can download them, and then we can provide you with an evaluation license, and um, you, you can get it from there. Maybe Amanda will share that link for people after this webinar. Yep, no problem. And that was it. That was the last question. That's that question. All right. So yeah, we're just about on time, 45 minutes. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the webinar, and um, hopefully you can come again on 12th of August. So thank Amanda and Karen for the help today, 
and uh, we'll and we'll see you again next month. Thank you. Thank you.